All right, so welcome back everybody. So for this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to play Yak. So let's get started. Now, to, in order to save space, because this board is doesn't really need to be that big for this game, but it is, I've decided to put the player boards on the board here, and I've kind of pushed in the carriages in a little closer. Now, the setup is actually supposed to be where you put a player board in front of one carriage only. So technically, this player board here would be on this side of this carriage here in a two-player game, which is what I have it set up for. But it doesn't really work for trying to show you guys how to play the game. So just know that f during each turn, whichever carriage is here is accessible to only this player here, while this carriage is only accessible to this player here, okay? Just, for, just so you know. Now, in the setup, in a two- or three-player game, you will only play with three of the four carriages. Just three, okay? Um, and you'll put, randomly, three stones from the quarry bag, which is this right here, into each of the carriages. You'll also notice that some of these carriages have a little uh, cross between some of the various resources, so I'll show you up close. So like, for instance, this one doesn't have meat on it. For one thing, there is no meat food resource on this cart, it just has milk and bread. The other two also only have one of the, th also only have two of the three on theirs. So that one, for instance, doesn't have bread on it. And then this one over here does not have milk on it. Okay, so not only are those resources not put on the carriage for the setup, but you also can't trade resources of this particular type with this particular carriage, okay? Now, you uh, the objective of, of the game is to build a tower. So as a demonstration, for instance, I'm just gonna randomly take some stones from the bag and you're gonna try to build a tower, okay? Now, you're not gonna take them from the quarry bag and put them on your player board, but I'm just showing you that this is kind of what you want to be doing. You kind of want to uh, build a tower because that's the object of the game is to build a tower to get it at least four layers high. So for instance, this is two layers high, okay? And then the third layer would only have three stones on it. So I'll grab three more. And then the fourth layer would only have two stones on it. Okay, so we'll do two. And once a player gets the fourth layer completely done, it triggers the end of game. Afterwards, there, there's only one more round that takes place, so that way everyone can have an equal amount of turns, and then the game is over. But it is possible to build more than just four layers. You could build five layers, and if you ever end up being able to build more than five layers, then it will look something like this, for instance. If you're able, ever able to do more than four or five, you could potentially do six or seven layers, but you're just going to keep building up one, 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 as high as it can possibly go, or as high as possibly as you can go. But they, basically, that's the object of the game, is building this tower. You're also going to get victory points based on groupings of colors. So you're going to want to try to get certain colors adjacent to each other to form a group. At least two of the same color is a group. So if you can get more of the same color, that's more points. But you, you can get, you're going to get, you're also going to score points for for the total of groups you have. So you might have three yellow touching adjacent to each other. You might have two orange next to each other. You might have um, uh, two gray uh, uh, next to each other. So that would be three groups. So you'll score points for each, for all the groups you have in total of colors as well, okay? That's the main way you're gonna score points in this game, okay? That's the main way, okay? All right, so, but how do you how do you how do you play this game? How do you take actions and things like that? So let's explain that now that we've explained the objective of the game. 
Okay, so you start with three different foods, okay? Uh, milk, bread, and meat. This is your yurt on your player board. You can only have um, eight of the, of the food resources on your player board, so you can't have any more than that. The carriages can only hold nine resources, uh, food resources on each carriage, only nine, okay? Um, and uh, so you'll start with one each of each food types for the setup. You'll also put uh, two food, two of each food into the market, which is this middle section, okay? And then obviously three food uh, of each that can go on each of the carriages, obviously not the one that's not allowed. So there's no meat on this one, for instance. Okay, so as an action, uh, there's three different actions you can take on your turn, okay? Um, you can take the restock action, which is this one here, okay? You can take the build action, which is this one, or you can take the market action, which is this one, okay? You have three choices of actions you can take. Um, the first probably likely action you're going to take is going to be the restock action because in front of you, you have a carriage and you have a potential of getting a lot of resources to start with. Uh, so as the re if you take the restock action, what you're going to do is you're going to take one food type from the carriage of your choice. And that means you take all of it. So if I chose, for instance, milk, I would take all three of these milk uh, tokens and put them on my player board. Remember, you can only have eight on here. So by taking these three, I can only take two more after that, okay? So that's one of the actions you can take. After you do that, then what you're going to do is you're going to take a stone from the quarry bag, okay? And you're gonna put it on the carriage. Each carriage can only have four stones. So if there is already four stones on your carriage, then you skip that part of the action, okay? So that's basically what you're going to do when you take that action. Now, before you take any actions, you're going, you're, each player is going to choose one of the actions that they can take and they're secretly going to place it in front of them at the same time as the other player because you don't know what your opponents are going to do. So that's basically supposed to be secret. And then each player, each player will take their turn one at a time. The player who has the uh, baby yak will go first, okay? And they will reveal their card and take their turn. So that's how that's going to work. At the end of each round, this little token will get moved to the other player and then they will get to go first on the next round, and so on and so on. So this will get passed around, okay? Um, so like I said, that's that's one action. The restock action is one of the three actions you can take. Um, another action you can take is you can take the market action. When you take the market action, you can take one or two food of your choice from the market, and they can be different resources. So I could take a meat and I could take a bread, for instance, that would be allowed, and I could put them on my yurt, on my player board. So that's another action you can take, is the market action, getting to take food from there. Um, but then after you do that, you'll take three bags, three stones from the bag. Okay, so let's just do that. So we take three stones from the bag. One, two, and three. You'll notice one of these is white that I just took. This is a fog token, okay? It's not really, it's actually never gonna go on your tower. It is never gonna go here. It won't go here. When you get one of these, you have to place it on the mountain track, which is right there. You also have to redraw for it as well. So if you draw one of those, then you're gonna have to draw another one, okay? Now, what these will do is when these are drawn, What's going to happen is it's going to cause your yaks to rotate and they're going to be facing the other direction. So, um, you know, they're all facing this way. So they're all going in one direction. So actually the game setup starts out with them facing the left. So this is actually the setup of the game. They would be facing this direction to start with because they would be going clockwise. At the end of each round, they will move. 
so that each player will have access to a new cart, a new wagon, a new carriage, basically. That's what's going to happen at the end of each round. These things are going to rotate. But if you ever get a fog token, what's going to happen is it's going to cause it to rotate and go the other direction. And so they will move from basically clockwise to counterclockwise. And the next time a fog token is drawn from the bag, the same thing will happen. Okay. But you're supposed to draw three from the bag when you take the the market action, okay? Then you can choose one of the three, you choose one of the three to put on a carriage of your choice. It doesn't have to be the carriage in front of you. You can put it on a carriage of your choice. You're just choosing one stone though. So I could put this stone here, for instance, and then the other two stones would just go back to the back, okay? Whenever you get a stone, uh, the fog stones uh, for the, the mountain track, they will keep going here, on here, and then when this, this, this cloud token is removed, then you'll put all of the fog, all of the fog tokens, uh, meaning four of them, back into the bag. So that means you'll be doing this again, rotating these yaks again and again and again, pretty much every time it's drawn from the bag. Okay. Um, and uh, the second time. The second time that the mountain track is filled with the fog tokens, then they will stay there and they won't be put back into the bag, okay? So at some point, you won't be rotating the yaks again. So it just depends on what you draw from the bag, okay? So that's what's going to happen. Um, so that's the market action. So that's when you, what you're going to do when you take the market action, okay? And then the last action, the main action, the one that's going to help you get um, to start building your tower, is you can take the build action and trade in food for for stones. Okay. Now, so let's say I wanted to take that action. So what I can do is I can pay a certain amount of food, and on our player boards that tells us exactly how the trading is gonna work. So we can trade one food for one stone. We can trade three food for two stones. We can trade five food for three stones. And then there are these light blue stones, which are, which are these, okay? Um, these are considered a wild uh, stone. And at the end of the game, they can be treated as one particular type of color for scoring purposes, so that way you can get a group of colors and all that. But at the end of the game is when you can decide what color that this will be. But if you ever take one of these stones, not only do you have to pay the normal food cost of the stone, for the stone or stones you take, but you, t you have to also pay one additional food for this stone as well. Not only that, but each cart, well, each of these three carts won't take certain foods in trading. So this one, for instance, won't take meat. So I can't utilize this meat token to trade for a stone. So even though I technically have three food and I could trade three food right now for two stones, if I was to take the build action first, for instance, I wouldn't be able to because my, my carriage will only take uh, two certain types of food and that's it. It won't take the other kind. So I could only at most trade one food for one stone. Okay, but I suppose if one of these light blue ones was on the current carriage, I could still pay the other food to take that instead. So that's something if you decide to take the build action first as your first action in the game. But you most likely you're going to want to get you're going to want to want to take the restock action so you can get a lot of food. So that way you can get even more stones when you do t decide to take the build action. So that's what you're going to do if you take the build action. Okay, um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything. Now, if you ever are going to take, or let's say your action does cause you to take all of the stones from the carriage. So let's say that happens, and I used an action, and it allowed me, and I paid enough food to take all of these stones, and this carriage became empty. Then you will take out three more stones immediately. At the end of your turn, you'll take out three more and you'll place them 
on your carriage. Obviously, if you get one of these white ones, you'll have to redraw again and place it, because it's a fog, onto the mountain track. But you'll get the point, so you can refill the carriages that way too, if you ever end up emptying out a carriage. Now, if the carriage is empty and you take the build action, then you can do it immediately. You can take uh, the, you, you can refill it before you literally take the build action if it's ever, some, for some reason, empty beforehand. But basically, that's what's going to happen on your turn. Um, so that's basically the three actions that you can take on your turn. Um, and then once, uh, once the fourth layer is obviously, once your fourth layer on your stone tower is completed, that triggers the end of the game. Um, you'll get this little uh, token here, which will give you three additional points if you're the first player to finish the fourth, uh, the fourth layer, for instance. And then everyone gets one more turn. But basically, um, that's pretty much how you're going to play the game. You're going to, you know, take food. You're going to build, and that's pretty much it. The fog might mess up which way the carriages will go, but it's basically how that's going to work. And then you have a score pad here that shows you how what you're going to score based on what you get. So, uh, for instance, this one will be for how many of a particular color uh, did you get. So, let's say you got five yellow. Well, you you'll notice it gives you it gives you twelve points if you have five yellow, and then the reason why there's a times here. Well, what if you had uh, five yellow and five orange, for instance? So then that would be twelve times two equals what? Twenty four, right? So basically, you'll get a lot of points based on how many uh, how many colors make up one particular group, and you're going to score for all of your groups and how many colors, colored stones make up each of the groups. And then you'll score for how many groups in total you have. Uh, if you have, like, for instance, five groups at the end of the game, they might, be, they might be small groups, but if you have five, that would be 12 points that way too. And then um, for single stones that are by themselves, you score one point. So if you have a stone that's not part of a group, that didn't make up a group, and it's separated from you know, other colors of its particular type. For each stone that's by itself, you just score one point, and then you could potentially have more than one, obviously. Um, you'll also score based on how much uh, leftover food you have as well. Um, let me look in the rule book exactly how much you score if you have leftover food, but I know it's not very much. Um, it is... Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so the player who has the most food tokens at the end of the game gets two points. So, uh, and the, um, so whoever has the most food at the end of game, uh, leftover food at the end of the game will score two points. So only only one player, unless it's a tie. Um, and obviously, if you got that token, you'd get three points. And pretty much that's everything altogether. You just add up all your numbers, and the player who has the most points would win the game. But basically, that's how you play Yak. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time. Don't forget to leave me a like if you guys liked my explanation. Goodbye.